learning how to build a real-time application is crucial because they have become an essential part of our digital world. More and more users are expecting instant data updates and real-time interactions. There are a few ways to build real-time applications or real-time features and it is important to understand the difference between these techniques. My goal for this course is for you to know when to choose what technology and giving you a hands-on experience when you're building a real-time application. For our demo project, we are going to use TypeScript, Next.js, Superbase and Tailwind CSS. That doesn't mean you have to be an expert in these technologies, but it is good to know the basics of TypeScript and Next.js. We are going to build an application for filmmakers where the filmmakers can build a storyboard collaboratively with other members in the film crew. The filmmaker should be able to create an account and create a storyboard and then share this storyboard with others. So once this filmmaker shared the storyboard, then the shared user should be able to edit this storyboard. What's important is that shared storyboard should not be publicly accessible for any other users other than the shared user. So here, for example, you have user one, user two, and user three. So user one can share his storyboard with user three and user three can edit the storyboard of user one. And then user two is a separate user that he can create a storyboard, but not share. So this is user two storyboard is not accessible for user one and user three. Let's go to our app. So I have two windows on the the left side is a normal window, an incognito window. On the right side, I have a normal window. So I'm going to log in on the left side with one of my emails. And you can see now I logged in with this email. And here I can click on this, click start storyboard, start creating, and it shows me storyboard page. And on the right side, now if I click start creating, I have to log in. So I'm going to log in with a different user. And as you can see now on the header, I have two different users. So if I go to the uh, storyboard page in both users, and uh, if I add a storyboard in the left side, it doesn't reflect on the right side. So if I delete it, it's still uh, it's the same case. On the right side, if I add a new storyboard, it is not reflected on the left side. So this is the correct behavior. And then I'm going to share this storyboard with the user in the right side now. And as you can see on the right side, there is an eye blinking. So that means sharing, the screen is sharing. And you can add a storyboard on the left side. It is now reflected on the right side right away. So, and it's the same case, the user on the right side can uh, ch do changes and it's reflected on the left side right away. And uh, same case, now I can stop sharing and add stuff on the left side. Right? It's not reflected anymore with the right side user. All right. You already have an idea about how different real-time technologies work. Now, what about building a quick MVP feature that has real-time functionality? As you might know, it takes time to build these features from ground up and they will become more and more complex. Due to this reason, we selected Superbase as our real-time database because they provide real-time feature and a lot of other different technologies that we need to take more time to build. So we are going to use some of the features from Superbase. We are going to build an MVP. So we need to build this feature as soon as possible. So we are going to use some uh, technologies like Next.js, TypeScript, but we are trying to make this fast, but also functional. So let's get it started. I'm in my terminal. I'm using something called item. This is available for Mac and also for Windows. And I'm in the place, the location that my project will be lived. So you can put your project in any place, anywhere in your computer. So then you can go to your path. Basically, you can type CD and go to the project and you will be there. And first thing, we need to install Next.js and Superbase. Type npx create next app and you can give, addition, give additional parameters. So what I'm going to do is add with Superbase. This will help us to create all the authentication route, install the necessary packages, and there will be some, uh, some guides for our application. So let's start running this. You can say yes. And then you can give any name to your package. So I'm going to say storyboard. All right, as you can see, now it is installed. Here is our Visual Studio code. 
gonna zoom in a little yeah this is a new next.js project and you can see there is an app folder this is recently released with next.js and we are going to use this new feature very cool and if you go inside the app folder there is this authentication folder and login folder so superbase already created some features for us so we don't have to spend too much time to rebuilding reinventing these things so let's go into package file let's investigate this so first thing is as any other project next.js project you have the scripts build dev and start and you have some packages these two packages that we are going to use for building our real-time features and what i'm going to do sorry i forgot to mention one more thing tailwind css and typescript also there so this is these are also important that we are going to use tailwind css to style our application so i'm going back to our terminal and i'm going to type here on there let's try to start this project so it's already running and next is 14 and you can go to the project clicking this one and yes here goes the home page there is already nice styling and some text here but you can't see any login or anything why is that it's because we need to do a few more things here and as you can see there is a example file environment file dot env local so we can rename this to environment.local and just need to follow these steps so you need to sign up to superbase and get these keys so i'm going to log in to superbase and i already have an account but if you don't have an account yet you can go to superbase.com and uh, sign up so once you sign up you have the dashboard here and if you go to the project settings i can get these two keys and on key you can paste it here and project url you can copy from here and paste it here all right we have all the basic settings we need and let's go to our terminal and try to restart the project because we changed the environment variables now you can see the login page if you click here and there is the login page you can sign up or log in with here from here and uh, what happened uh, if you log in I already had account with this email and you logged in this is a page that after logging in okay now you have the project up and running and now we are going to update our home page so there are a lot of boilerplate stuff going on here so i'm going to change these boilerplate codes to much simpler home page and you can download this example code base from uh, your course description if you go to the first page of the course or top of the course you will see the example code and you can simply copy paste so first i will uh, update the home page so basically home page is located at in the app folder and page.dsx so there are a lot of stuff going on so i'm going to update it with my code and of course now i need some of these uh, component so i'm going to clean up a little bit the component folder so basically if you go inside the component there are some things here so i will still keep the component uh, superbase logo component and i'm going to delete i'm going to change next logo to logo and i'm going to keep another one this this one step i'm going to change it to log out button and i'm going to delete the rest of the components mm, there's two things missing okay so i'm going to update the logo to this this code base and log out button to this which just user will redirect to out.sign out page super base logo is just uh, the same so if i go to the page now and now all of these are fixed now one thing we need is this out helper next.js so what i'm going to do is go to our terminal and do yarn add super base out helper next.js now if i go back to the page there is no errors now let's try to run our project if it gives any errors and no so our home page is 
now look like this. So if you go to the page, you have uh, this logout button here, just simply saying logout it goes here. And the logo is uh, something, an SVG, I've created it. It's, we call the project storyboard, I storyboard it. And the rest is following start creating button. So basically it will redirect to slash storyboard page. Otherwise it will redirect to the login page. So what I'm doing here with the, with the user, Superbase had, has this function that you can get the current user uh, using the cookie. And if the current user is available, then we can check, we can do whatever we like. We have the home page, and when you click, it will go to storyboard. And right now this route is empty. So we need to create this route in our next lesson. All right, you already created the home page. And now we have this button, start creating. So when you click on this button, it goes to storyboard. Right now it's an empty page and it's, the page is not found. So basically what we want to do is create a page where users can add stories and share with others, then they can also add the stories. So in order to do that, with Next.js, you go inside the app folder and create a new folder called storyboard. And inside here, now you need a page, tsx file. And first thing is you need to export a new function. I think you can call it index or you can call it storyboard. And let's return something here. And now if you go back to the browser, now you see our storyboard page. And here, what we want to do first is to uh, check if user logged in or and if user not not logged in we need to redirect them back to the login page so as you already seen in the main page you can use the same super base method to check if the user is there so i'm going to copy this part and I'm going to import this and import this and now we have users and now what we can do we can check if user well let's say if not user then we redirect redirect to slash login a redirect is a function that you get with next navigation let's see if it works so i'm logged in and i'm still here so if i go to a private window Go to the same page and it redirect me to the login page so same and i'm going to home page and there's login but in our other case we have the user email and say hey and log out button but here we have a login button and you can click here and it's going back to the login page great the next step is to add our layout so first thing is we want to have a header so i'm going to bring up vs code I'm going to paste this. The share component I will build later. So it looks like this. But now we have a back button. Only thing this one is doing is a back, adding a back button. And um, what we need is we need a few more things here. And uh, right now we don't have these components. So you can have can comment this and uh, come in soon and here there is the body and what we need to do is we need to build all these different component so let's start with the share component this component has two functions one is to show user if they are sharing or not with another user or if it's not sharing we need to show a modal and let them enter an email address and then start sharing. So first thing you need to do, you are in the storyboard page and you can start creating a file called share.tsx. And here let's create a simple function. This will return a button, start sharing. Okay, this is the basic function. So let's uncomment this. And we need to import it. And uh, right now it's not accepting any user ID. So I'm going to command it out. Let's go back. So on the right side, we have a start sharing button. 
I'm going to add simple styling as a button here using Tailwind CSS. Now let's go back. Yeah, it looks like this now. So I also want to show an icon of an eye. So if it's sharing, so a gif that a blinking eye, so it look much nicer. So I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna wrap this in inside a span. And here I can add another div, the class name. And so you can use image from uh, Next.js image. I have prepared an image. So share, I will call this I. I need to import this image component from Next.js. And now if you look back, there is a missing image. So I'm gonna find that image. When you have an image in Next.js, you need to put it in the public folder. Let's see if we have a public folder. No, there is no public folder. So I'm going to create a public folder here. And I'm going to also create all the core images. And here I'm going to paste my image. It looks like this. And this should work. Yes. If I give a refresh, there is the image. So just to add a little bit of spacing here. Class name here. ML means margin left to so there there should be this should be perfect now so I want to show this image only when users start sharing so I'm gonna create a user create a local state called e sharing so by default it's false I need to import user state and now I can what I can do from here I can check the image if uses sharing. I can do like this and move everything inside. We get this error because our component is a server component by default. We need to change it to client component. Just add a use client on top of your file and this will change to a client component. Yes, now you can see the start sharing button. Now we can add the on click handle to our button to update set is sharing state. So whenever user click on the button, the set sharing will be toggled. So as you can see, now you when you click, you see the eye. Now we can also switch the word stop and start sharing. Just like we did with the icon, we can say start when a user is not sharing and when user is sharing, we can say stop sharing. Just like that. So one thing left to do is we need to show a modal and when the user click on start sharing, we need to ask their email address. So in order to do this, we need to create another state. Maybe let's call it show modal. And what we need to do is when this show modal is true, we need to show a modal asking for user's email and with the email address who they want to share with. So here we can do show modal. If show modal is true, then we are showing the show modal component. So in the on click handler, we are going to change it later. We are going to set this show morale true. But first of all, we need to wrap this render uh, return with the fragment. So the first error is gone. And the second thing is we need to create the share model component. Let's start building the share model component. We can call it share model. And here, basically the same case, you have to always use use client. If the component is a client component, and here I'm going to have props here. So we need to do something on submit and we need to close here. And um, what is, yeah, that's basically it. And we can just create a prop. Yeah, no return here. Just a simple do. Can see it here. Ah, yeah, because we need to start using it here and we need to pass these two props. I'm going to change these two props to now instead of accepting any, let's accept a proper function with the parameter data the where you pass the data with don't submit. You can pass any data and return a void. Same goes here. Actually, you don't need really anything here, any props. 
and I have prepared basic HTML and uh, so yeah yeah basically just a wrapper with the styling using Tailwind CSS and when there's a button for close when the user click on close a uh, close button it will trigger the on close that we can trigger this from the parent component and handle submit this uh, for this we need to use some kind of package for sending forms so i'm using something called react hook forms there are a bunch of packages you can choose whatever you can import use form here here in the use form you can do register and handle submit i think i did not install this so you need to install this package also yeah now the array is gone and uh, everything is here and then uh, let's go back here in the share model now we need to pass on submit model first we need to import the share model on submit we need to do something i will create another function called on modal submit on close also we need to pass something called on modal close so we need to create these two functions what i'm gonna do is submit on modal close so you have these two now so if you go back the idea is when you click on this button the model will turn on so how can we do that so here show modal is always uh, kind of off right now so here we are we are doing something called uh, set sharing so i would instead of doing this i'm gonna create two functions called start sharing and stop sharing So let's go back. I click here and it's just there. And if I click here, it's, it's closes. Thanks for and watching. You can, uh, if you want to keep learning, click the link in the description below. Model. We'll send the next model. video lesson in this series directly to your inbox. Yeah. This modal, share modal. So this is just part of the basic UI and uh, what we are going to do next is we are going back to the page and start creating the new story. So basically with new story you will be able to uh, in this this part of the page you will be able to click and add a new story. Thanks for watching. If you want to keep learning click the link in the description below.